Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, I'm aware it's been almost a month now since the games came out and I have yet to do a review. That review is in the works. It should be out next week, hopefully by Christmas. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. I apologize that it has taken me so much time. But before we get into that review, I want to hit on a couple pre-review criticisms. A couple things that are smaller, but I think are worth discussing in their own video and really shaped my experience with Brilliant Diamond. That being said, let's jump right into things. Now, before we go with anything, before I start getting into specific details, I want to make the very, very obvious point and you could tell if you watched any of my live streams Let's Playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond last month, I really enjoyed my time with these remakes. I am a big Generation 4 fan. Platinum is one of my favorite Pokemon games. Diamond and Pearl, Diamond, I have incredible memories of getting it for Christmas when I was a kid, getting lost in the cave under the cycling road. It, there's a lot of memories there that I'm really nostalgic for. So playing through Brilliant Diamond, playing through an HD version of these classic games on the Nintendo Switch is something that I'm really happy we now have. It gives me a more accessible way to go play through this generation, and I think it's going to open up a lot of younger people's ability to play and experience what I think is one of the best designed regions in the Pokemon world. So I enjoyed my time with it. There were things at the same time that I was critical of as I was playing, and as I've marinated on them, I think they've become a lot more prominent in my mind when going through this game. And I wanna start out with the first one, which is the graphics. Specifically, we're gonna hit on the overworld graphics here. As a whole, I thought it was a good looking game. I thought the overworld looked decent. My opinion ever since these games were officially revealed back in February, on the models still stands. I think in a lot of instances they look really awkward and I think they don't fully fit in with the environment of the world they are existing in. That criticism is always going to exist for me. It's something that's not going to change. There were specific instances in the game where the lighting engine definitely alleviated some of that. Specifically in a lot of nighttime locations and in a lot of towns, the lighting and shadows really did a lot to blend the two pieces of the art style together. And I thought in those specific cases, it looked quite good. It looked like a very stylized version of Generation 4. On the flip side of that, there is the negatives. There are certain locations in the game, specifically the Great Marsh, or not the Great Marsh, the marshy swampland routes to the, uh, to the southeast of Sinnoh that really just, they don't look good. The lighting engine falters majorly in these locations. It looks as if your character is just walking over the, the game's designed world with no real interaction between the model and the world itself. In this area, it's a little bit darker. The grass is a little bit darker. It's raining in this location. And there's no lighting effects whatsoever. There's no shadows. There's no specific examples of the player character kind of feeling grounded on the world he or she is walking through. It looks muddy and it does not look pleasant. It looks like an engine that should have gotten more work done to it. There are a couple other locations like it. When you leave Salacion Town and go north from there, the route between that and Veilstone City, where it's also raining, notice it's, it's a rain problem, specifically with this engine. It looks the same. The character model just doesn't seem to fit on the world. It really hurt my immersion as I was playing through it. And the routes are so long. These are two of the more lengthy routes in the Sinnoh region. You're going to spend a lot of your time battling trainers, going through tall grass in these locations and you have to look at it this entire time, and it's not that pleasant. So there's two very distinct sides to this. The, the overworld itself, it looks fine designed. It looks like an up more stylized version of Generation 4, and I can appreciate the art style for what it is. But those models in specific locations, they just don't do it. And I've gotta, I've gotta dock points for that because it really takes you out of the immersion. Now, of course, in battle, I have to commend Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I think whatever they did with the models and the lighting of the Pokemon themselves in battle, a lot of them look really good. They really pop in the battle, and the background animations, the background uh, of battles, 
is incredible. Almost every location you have has an incredibly stylized, artistic background. You can really feel that you're in the place that you're in, whether you're up north near Snow Point or if you're in some of the normal grassier routes. If you're battling in a city, if you're battling at Spear Pillar against the Legendary, if you're fighting Team Galactic, or if you're in the Elite Four facing on one of them or the champion Cynthia. The backgrounds and the battles are highlights. It looks really good, the Pokemon really pop, and they've really done a good job of showing the player character behind the Pokemon and not making it lag like it has in some previous games. So in terms of graphically, it's an average game. It is a very average game, and it's a bit, it's, it's below average in my opinion for Pokemon games. Pokemon has never pushed the mold really with graphics, but they really they really were trying here it felt like to squeeze a lot out of an orange that didn't have a lot of juice left uh and you can see that in a lot of locations so graphically those are my thoughts on that side of things. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free, and if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. With that being said, let's get right back into the discussion. Now, the other piece that I want to hit on here that I don't want to spend too much time harping on in my big main review of this game is the diamond and pearlness of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This is a debate that the Pokemon community is gonna have for a very long time. And I wanna make my opinion on this for all remakes that we might get in the future very clear. Diamond and Pearl have a definitive version. They had a definitive version back in the early 2000s, and that was Pokemon Platinum. And in every single fathomable way, Platinum is a better rendition of the Sinnoh region of the characters in the Sinnoh region and of the story of the Sinnoh region than Diamond and Pearl. It has a better Pokedex. It has better character motivations and development. It has a better overarching story with Team Galactic, with the Elite Four, with Cynthia, with the Professor. Every little piece with your rival. It has a better post game with the Battle Frontier. It has a better post game island as a whole with the place, with the little hut uh, house you can go to and rematch gym leaders, with the remixed look of Sinnoh, making it more wintry, making it more snowy, the redesigned trainer outfits, the redesigned animations when you enter battles and the versus things and all of that. It is, by every single account, a better version of the Sinnoh region. They made a conscious decision. We want to sell two distinct versions of this game and we want to make more money. It is a profit-driven decision. It is not based on what's best for the player. It is not based on what's best for the story. It is solely so we can have tradable Pokemon that encourages people to use our features or maybe buy both because they sell a double pack digitally and physically. That is it. That is the only reason why you would ever consider in a real legitimate discussion, not of just like, oh, it's Diamond and Pearl. This is what they do. No, that's nonsense. I don't agree with that assessment. Platinum is the vastly superior game on every single level. They should have remade that. Or if they were going to stick to Diamond and Pearl, then they should have heavily, and I mean heavily, coaxed in Platinum elements into Diamond and Pearl's story and made a hybrid while also keeping those trade evolutions and those minor differences. You can do that. You just have to put the work in. I'm aware that this is a separate developer who hasn't made a massive project before. But you had consultation from Masuda, you had consultation from Game Freak. You could have done this, and you chose not to. This game should have been a Platinum remake. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire did it better. They tried to weave in even... They weaved in Emerald Elements with a post-game story and Zinnia and adding new content and all of that. Adding Generation 6 content like Mega Evolutions. They did it fine. That's a fine remake. They didn't hit it out of the park with Oras. There were elements of Emerald that should have been there. Emerald, again, compared to Omega Ruby and, uh, compared to Ruby and Sapphire, excuse me, is a vastly superior game in my opinion. That is the, those are the games that need to be remade. Do not remake an inferior version. So you have to even have a discussion in the community that we can go back to a DS version and play that one over the brand new remakes. It shouldn't happen. You shouldn't have to do that. I digress. But though, in terms of Platinum and Diamond and Pearl, those are my extended thoughts. I'm, I'm very, the more I get away from it, I'm very critical of the decision to go with Diamond and Pearl and not go with Platinum. I think it is solely a greed decision. I think they wanted to make an extra buck. They wanted to make that $60 price tag for both games and sell two. 
it probably kills them that they're only selling one copy of Legends Arceus when it comes out next month, because that's only go. Everyone's only going to buy one. No one's going to buy two. There'd be no reason to. This was a purely monetary decision, in my opinion, and it's something that should not be done in the future, even though it probably will be done. And that's unfortunate. And that was a lot of ranting. That was a lot of critical things. These are the two areas of criticism that I think I have the strongest things to say on that I don't want to really harp on for minutes at a time in my review because I don't want to make like a 25 minute review. That's not the type of video that I make. I am a eight to 15 minute kind of guy. That's kind of what I prefer. So I wanted to get some of these out now, give you guys something to listen to. I want to hear your feedback specifically on what I had to say today. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me on any of these uh, these criticisms? Do you have your own that you'd levy against the game, specifically against the Pokedex? I didn't go into it here in much detail because I'm dedicating a lot of my review to talking about the Pokedex. It's something that I talked about before the game came out. And it's something that I still have a strong opinion about now, but I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. And as I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn notification bell on so you never miss another upload, and leave a like so it enters the algorithm and more people see my overly critical takes on some very simple things in Pokemon. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.